Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Bulkham. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint up a Primaris Intercessor in the colours of the Marines Errant. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Macrag Blue. I'm going to be painting this onto exactly half of the model. So to do this, you're going to be drawing a blue line directly down the side of the centre where the blue is. By that I mean the half that is going to be white, you want to be just to the right of that. So that you are splitting the model directly in the middle. If you draw the blue line straight down the middle, it'll be slightly further over into the white than it should be. So you can see here the left hand side of the line is where the halfway point is. So you can see here that we've got one half of the model completely painted in Macrag Blue. And now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Avalon Sunset to paint his eye lenses. So try and keep these within the lines here. You don't really want to go onto the white with any other colour if you can at all help it. Because white is a bit of a pig to paint. So just give those a nice smooth coat of Avalon Sunset. And then we can move on to the next colour. Next up, we're going to be using Vallejo Black. Now any black will do. So any Citadel Black that you've got, that'll do fine. This is just to paint up the seals on his armour and the casing for the bolt gun, or the bolt rifle I should say. Now I'm going to do a video for just painting up the battle damage on him. You will see how I do it here with the speeded up clips, but we're going to be doing a slow time video of just painting up this model battle damage, and I'll be doing a video of just painting on battle damage in the future. So once you've got all the black down, it's on to the next colour. Next up we're going to be using Citadel Warboss Green. I'm going to be painting the knee pad for this because they have their company colours on the knee pad. Now this is a little bit from uh, one of the Warhammer Wiki pages that says about this because I was looking in the Badab War Book and some of them don't appear to have squad markings. They have squad numbers all over the place so they are a bit of a strange chapter in terms of their iconography and the colours. I've also missed out the clip for painting the sling. I use Citadel Mournfang Brown for the sling. So if you have more fine brown, or whatever colour you usually use to do the slings, paint that up as well. Next up, it's a little bit of Citadel Retributor armour. I'm going to be using this to do the casings for the bolt rounds, also the Aquila on his chest and the skull, the skull on his helm, and also the Crux Terminatus, I think it is, on his shoulder pad. I also use it on the casings of the grenades as well, which are attached to the sling there. Just get that nice and smooth layer of gold there. So now we're going for Vallejo Model Air Silver. That's pretty much identical to Chrome, it's ever so slightly different, but I'm running a little bit low on Chrome, so we're going to use this one today. I'm going to paint the inside of all the bullet holes and the slices with this just so it's got a nice bright silver colour so it shows up well. We're also going to paint up the barrel and the details on the bolt rifle and the sections of his power pack on his back. Do those in this Model Air Silver 2. Now we're going to go for Citadel with fist on red. I'm going to use this just to do the little caps on the end of the grenades. You don't really need to do this, but I thought I'd give them a bit of extra colour. Make them stand out a little bit. Like so. Now we're going to move on to the shades. We're going to start with Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. This is going to be to do all the blue. Now you do want to be careful with this because you don't want to get any onto the white. Because as I say, white is a bit of a pain to paint. So you want to get all of the blue with this in all the recesses, on any of the ridges. Try and avoid getting it onto the model air silver or any of the golds or anything like that. You really do want to be really careful just to keep this onto the blue. 
Also, I'd recommend doing the whole shoulder pad with it, not just around the edge like I've just done. Now we're going to use Citadel Contrast Paint Apothecary White. I'm going to use this just on all of the white. That's the first time I've used this contrast really to do a specific model. I've actually painted it all over an apothecary model, but I haven't actually painted that yet. I was just testing out to see how it looked. And I used it on this model. I'm really, really impressed with the results of it. I thought I'd try out on this rather than using the Vallejo wash, the pale grey wash that you usually use. But I am very impressed with the contrast and how that's turned out. So I would recommend the contrast. So with the white done, we're now going to move on to all the silver areas. We're going to use Citadel Nuln Oil for this. So we're going to get into each of the slices, the bullet holes, all over all of the metallic parts. Just give them a good coat of Nuln Oil so that the detail stands out and it darkens them down a bit. Next up is Citadel BL Tan Green. We're just going to use this to do his knee pad. A while ago I asked if there's any Space Marine chapters which people wanted to see, as well as some of the Bad Dad War ones. There's quite a few different ones there, so I've got a list of those. I'm going to be working my way through that list as the months go on. Should be some interesting ones to see anyway. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to use this on all of the gold, and on the brown of the rifle sling. like so. Now we're also going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to use that on the eye lenses. You could use Fugan Orange if you wanted them to look a bit brighter and give them that kind of warm look. But I'm just going for the colour they seem to be in the Bad Ab War books. Now we're going to start with reapplying the colours. We're going to start with Citadel McCrag Blue. I'm just going to reapply this on most of the areas, but always make sure that you leave some of the shades left into the recesses. And also you want to leave the shaded areas like under the arms and things like that, so you get the darkness there. You don't want to paint them a crack blue back onto the underside of the arms or the legs, that kind of thing. Now take your time with this because it is a good layer and we'll bring out the best of the model. Next up we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo White to the Citadel McCrag Blue. We're just going to lighten that enough so that you can put on the first highlight. And you want to be covering kind of the top half of the areas that would be catching the light. So always try and do like a polygon or something like that to show what I mean with these, or if you're doing the arms you want to do it down to the widest point of the arm. So that anything which is underneath the arm isn't getting highlighted. Nice focus on my finger there. Next up we're adding a little bit more Vallejo White. I'm just going to be painting about 50% of the area that we've just highlighted. Again, this is the areas that be catching the light the most. Now, as he is battle damaged, I've done this guy a little bit more haphazard with the highlights and things like that. It gives him kind of a slightly mottled look, as though he has been in battle. The surfaces aren't 100% smooth. I think that works quite well for him. Adding more Vallejo White to the previous mix. I'm now going to do the next highlight. So you're going to be doing the edges of things here. Maybe a little bit of highlight on the 
sections of the armour where it's catching the most light. But when you're doing the ridges, you really want to make sure that you're getting the highlights on the surface which will be catching the light. If you want to, you can creep this highlight out into the other blues a little bit if you want to, or you can just keep it as is. I do tend to spread it out a little bit more as time goes on when I'm painting this on, so start with the ridges and then spread it out a little bit. And the final highlight is going to be adding an additional part of Vallejo white to the mix, and this time we're just going to be highlighting the very edges underneath each of the slices and the gunshot pit marks in the armour. Just want to be catching those under edges just to give it that 3D look and make it look as though there is a chip in the paint and there's a ridge just underneath it. You can also go over some of the highlights on the armour as well if you want to do with this layer just to make them stand out a bit more if you don't like the way they stand out at the moment. So now we're going to start with the white and reapplying that to them. So try and use this in a similar style to how I do the highlights on the blue. So I'm painting the white over the areas that are going to be catching the light, so they're going to be the brightest. I'm trying to leave some of that contrast on there, because the contrast does shade it quite naturally. And give it that darker area underneath. So that's why I'm not going all the way down there, you just want to spread that on. And just work out as you're looking at it where it's going to look the best going up to. So working out where it's going to catch the light and just doing up to that point. Next up is Citadel Warboss Green. I'm going to reapply some of this to about the top 75% of the knee pad. Not just the top 75, the whole 75% of it, I should say. Like so. Then we're going to add a little tiny bit of Vallejo white to that and just lighten it up. I'm going to paint maybe the, the top half of it. So you've got some of the shaded area, then you've got some of the war boss green, and now you're going to have the highlight on the top half of the knee. Like so. Now you're going to add some Vallejo Model Air White and just do one final highlight on the edge that's going to be catching the most light. So you can do the top edge of the ridge there, but it's probably actually be a little further out because you've got that little trim on the kneecap there. Now we're going to start working on the gold, so you're using Citadel Retributor Armour once again. And you want to be highlighting pretty much all of the gold, leaving the Grax Air shade in all the recesses. And leaving some of the shaded areas so that you can see the change from the the brighter the gold to the shaded areas of the Agrax Air shade. Now we're going for Citadel Liberator Gold. We're going to be highlighting the Retributor armor with this. So again, thinking about where the light's going to catch it and where you can highlight. You're just going to highlight those top edges and the areas that are likely to be getting a, a bit more light than everywhere else. You can use it down the edges of each of the feathers just to make them stand out a little bit more. Just give quite a nice effect that. Like so. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome mixed with the Liberator Gold. I'm going to give one final highlight. I do use this just on the very tips. I like to give a little edge highlight to certain areas just to make them stand out. Because the amount of pigment in there does really give it a good shine. So I do like to use this as a mix when I'm doing the final highlights on gold. Moving on to the sling now, we're going to be using Citadel Mournfang Brown. So you want to reapply this. Again, you want to leave some of the shade 
in the recesses. So around those grenades on the belt there. And also underneath the boat rifle. And areas where the sling isn't going to be catching much light. Now we're doing Citadel of a Car Flesh mixed with the Mornfang Brown. Just going to do a highlight on the sling. So think about the edges of it where it's going to be getting rubbed a lot, getting scraped so the leather becomes a bit rough. That's the areas that we're going to try and highlight with the Ricard Flesh mix here. Now we're going to add another little bit of Citadel Ricard Flesh to the mix. I'm going to do another highlight on that sling. So you're going to be doing about 50% of the area that you just highlighted. Trying to catch those edges. Now it's Citadel Avalon Sunset. We're going to start working on the lenses. So leaving Seraphim Sepia. In the recesses on the lenses, you want to be reapplying the Avalon Sunset so it covers pretty much all the area. Just make sure that you do have that recess of Seraph and Sepia around each lens. I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush here, so it's used for all the little details. Now, we're adding some white to the Avalon Sunset. I'm using Vallejo White, but any white will do it. It's just to lighten the yellow just enough so that you can do a highlight. So the back, say third of the lens, you want to be trying to get that. But when I say the back third, you want it to be across the bottom in a crescent. So you leave some of the plain Avalon Sunset at the front there. Now we've added a little bit more white, and you're going to do a very small crescent within the previous crescent. It's actually quite difficult to see on the yellow this, which is probably why people like doing red lenses a lot. But again, going with the Badab War Book, I've gone for the yellow lens. So you just want to get that crescent in there. You can see me here reapplying some sepia to the edge because I managed to get some of that highlight into the edge there. So this is what I do. If you get a little bit in there, just keep adding the sepia to fill that little gap. So now the final highlight on the lenses is going to be Vallejo White. I'm just going to be putting a little spot at the front there. Little spot at the front there, then you want to be trying to get the thinnest line you can within those previous crescents. And again, went a little bit too far down there, so I'm using a little tiny bit of sepia just to get that shade back on the bottom of the lens. And then we're just using the white back at the top there just to put that highlight on. And here I've gone a little bit too thick with that highlight and put it too high, so I'm just using a bit of the previous mix. A bit of Avalon Sunset just to just to edge that back again. Now we're going on to Vallejo German Grey and we're going to start to highlight the black part of the model. So you've got the casing for the bolt rifle and also you've got all the seals on his power armour. So you want to be thinking about painting the top edges with this and painting all the ridges on the seals. That is very easy to get the highlights into the seal because the seals aren't massive on it so just be very careful and if you do happen to get any of the German grey into the seals then you can either use a little bit of null oil and just put that down the ridge or you can get a little bit of the previous black that you've used and just put that back on as well now we're going to use some Citadel Mechanica standard grey we're just going to highlight the bolt rifle case in here. We're not going to be highlighting the seals because I like to leave the seals so they're a very dull colour, like the sort of uh, rubber seals that you see where it's it's not shiny, it's just a very, very matte rubber. That wouldn't be reflecting too much light, so we're just going to leave them with the German grey highlight and just put the Mechanica Standard Grey Extreme Highlight onto the bolt rifle.
like so. Now we're going to start doing the shoulder pad. Now I'm going to be doing a video on Sunday, which is the, going to be the start of finish and slow time, of how to paint the Marines errant chapter symbol. It's just a freehand job going on here. So I'm drawing a crescent there with the sort of rounded arrow head at the front to make the start of the fireball and then start working on the flames away from that using Avil and Sunset. Now with the fireball set up we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo white to do the star in the bottom quarter. Now as you go along here you'll note that the star is maybe slightly off from where it should be but once you've got it in place you can then start tweaking the fireball, you can start tweaking the star and that's what I find freehand is all about. You get the basic shape, you get it down to where roughly where you want it and then all you're doing is tweaking that bit by bit until you get it looking as good as you want it to. Now with the star and the flame, we're just going to touch up some of the Avalanche Sunset because the star isn't quite in the right place, so I'm going to use this just to sling a little bit on there, get that shape right. Like so. Now you can see that the fireball has gone a little bit too far down there, but we can touch that up with a little bit of blue, that's not a problem. So now you see the fireball looks a little bit chunky at the bottom there. So what we're going to do is use a little bit of Citadel McCrag Blue and just touch that up. As always, if you get the chapter badge and it doesn't look 100%, don't keep going over it. Try it on the next guy, keep trying it on the next guy, and the more you practice it, the more you'll improve on it. So now we're just going to fill in that white. We've got the symbol down, we've got it where we want it, we've got the shape of everything else. So just going to use the tiniest little bit of white just to fill that in and get that so it's a smooth white and then use one of the previous highlight colours or roughly one of the previous highlight colours because this is a day or so later and just touch up that yellow. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome I'm going to start highlighting the battle damage again so just very carefully put that around the edges just to give them a little bit of a shine if you're doing one of the bigger battle damage bullet holes in them where you've got the kind of half circle taken out and a smaller half circle taken out of that. You can highlight that inner edge if you can reach it. Now we're going to use a little bit of Mechanicus Standard Grey from Citadel. And this is going to be to do the tactical markings on the shoulder pad and also the squad number on the knee pad. So there's a Battle line markings video on how to paint this up freehand. Uh, I'll link that here. It's basically just getting the triangle, getting the square beneath it or the rectangle beneath it, and then filling that in. The Marines aren't being the way they are, they have the squad numbers on their kneecap or their leg or their shoulder, depending on which one you're looking at. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm just going to use this to paint some scorch marks around where the blasts have gone off on his armour. So I'm painting these as though they are the Balkan rounds that have hit him. I was looking at pictures of RPG blasts and things like that when they've gone off and they tend to have a, almost a solid shaded area around them but then they have this like little normal coloured bit just around the edge of the blast so that's what I'm trying to go for here. Again this is going to be another video on how to paint up the battle damage that will be coming I would have thought a week or so away. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Air Shade. This is also going to be to paint up around the edges here just to add a little bit more colour, a little bit more scorching to the armour. This is going to be our final layer on him. We're just going to dirty up those blast marks, make it look as though it is scorched a little bit on the paintwork. So we have seen a little bit of action. I'll also be doing a video on how to paint battle damage without actually marking the model, so it's just going to be the paint to do it as well. 
And that is the finished Marine's Errand. It was a fun model. It, again, doing it in halves, doing it in quarters, does make it more interesting to paint because you're not really doing the whole model in the same colour, so good fun. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.